Hey guys, uh, Lee uh, back again. Um, just in a little short video, really. Just um, following on from what John Simmons posted yesterday. Um, huge, huge thanks to John uh, for posting what he did. I mean, these uh, kind of um, tutorials for painting uh, in the you know the aesthetics that we want to achieve with filming miniatures uh, in, in, you know, in terms of replication. Um, it's a very different approach um, to scale uh, modeling. Um, you know, we don't apply, uh, I think what are called like uh, sludge washes, you know, where basically you'll take um, various, you know, areas of detail on the model um such as you know uh, these kind of areas here you know where there's a high build up of uh, kit parts and you know applying um such as a, a black wash with a brush real heavy over that and then you know taking it all back as john said you know with a with um a cotton bud or you know just washing it back out it, it, it's very uh, it's a convoluted way of doing it and it's also incorrect for um the aesthetics we want to achieve with a with a filming miniature replication um this way of painting it, it doesn't it doesn't relatively mean only filming miniature replicas can be painted this way i've used the same techniques on little bandai uh, uh y-wings uh and models um you know you, you it, sometimes it's trickier because everything's very topical and daubed on um and that makes it tricky at some of the smaller scales uh this being i mean you know nearly 14 inches long it's a lot it's a lot more manageable and you can you know it's still still tricky but you can still achieve you know a, a fairly decent level of um fidelity with the paint um but yeah just following on from what john was saying yesterday in regards to applying some of these you know maybe weathering patterns thin washes um, you know, we do it all with an airbrush. I mean, yes, obviously there are, you know, topical applications with a with an artist brush, etc. Um, but much of this work we carry out with an airbrush. And um, again, as per Mr. Simmons's tip, no diffuser on the uh, on the airbrush. You know, remove that end nozzle. Now this allows you to work really close, you know, in a much finer manner, um, but also, um, it, it, you know, that your spray pattern is more localised, and what we want for this is a more localised um, effect. So I mean, what we've got here, if I just zoom in just a, a wee bit, uh, the, these parts here, now I've masked off my blue there you know my base is reefer white there's some grime misting and um, dark lark streaking but these pieces here uh, for example now they're not finished you know they're just stark reefer white you know those were planted on afterwards just through ease of masking you know i really didn't want to be masking up to here and yeah it makes it really difficult um uh, and you know another way when I paint the Jedi Y wings, which have the yellow band on the uh, the dome here, this little piece here from the um, the Tommy in New Jersey. Now putting those on, and then trying to mask that yellow band gets really tricky. And for, for the for the level of quality we want, you know, you want a nice masked off job. So yeah. These went on separate, so what I need to do is I just need to just randomly put some washes and filth into those little parts. Now, normally you could come along with an artist brush, you know, quite easy to do and just daub on. Um, but what I'm going to do here is um, just show you a little a little tip that Guy Cowan actually showed me. Um, and it was uh, a eureka moment. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm using Archive X um, Dark Lark Grey. Very, you know, staple uh, weathering colour. 
And as I said, I've got no tip on the airbrush. And I've got a very thin, thin, thin mix in there. You know, I mean, that is like literally all thin as it's, it's just very, very washy. And if I just move that around there, you know, the sort of effect you're going to get is... Okay, so it's very washy, you know, it's, um, you're not painting, you're just applying manual thinners. See that? And if I lie the brush at an angle there, sorry, it's really awkward with the camera, it's, it's ever so tricky, but... See those kind of streaks I'm getting there? All that kind of spatter pattern. I mean, you know, you, you, know, you can do different aspects where you pull the trigger back and... You get that? Uh, John showed it a different way the other day where he's feathering it like that. So it's all um, that, those those kind of effects that you're uh, that you're trying to get. Um, it's not set in stone that you know these are the colours and these are the techniques we should be using. You know, it's really not. You know, we're, we're not saying uh, you need to use this technique and you'll be uh, lambasted if you don't no not not at all I mean even if you're not using uh, archive X paints you know if you're not using um, you know bespoke enamel paints it doesn't matter you know I mean I've got some blobs on here that I need to uh, clean off you know it really isn't an issue um, what you are trying to do is replicate the look of the film in miniatures and with this paint it's very um, as John said yesterday it does give this amazing vintage um, aesthetic to the models you, you know it's um, uh, everything kind of looks old and aged and the techniques we apply in terms of weathering and such they only further that and by learning some of these techniques it just gives a nice element of just a little bit more accuracy to the model so what I'm going to do here uh, after the mishap <laughs> I'm just going to just wash this in with the airbrush so taking my dark lark very thin mix as I showed you just on the styrene now when you you know about to do this um, you know you may well spray it onto some uh, kitchen roll uh, or whatever you're using try and just uh, tr try and just test it up close on a, a piece of styrene you know as I've just shown um, it will just help you get the viscosity of the paint kind of where you want it because um, if it goes on too thick you've just painted the part you're not looking to paint the part you know, you're not looking to paint the area, you're just looking to put a, you know, a pretty cool looking wash through it. Uh, so, what I'll do. Get that prepped. And we'll just try. Okay. There's very finite little feathers of just beads of paint all around. And those are the kind of effects you want to be getting. You know, just random. I mean, There we go. And you've got this kind of feathering around here. Now, you know, they're not going to be accurate. They're not going to be like to the micron accurate of all the blips, drips and, you know, um, splodges that are on the uh, on the studio model. You know, you, 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 you can't do that. You really can't. It's all about the aesthetic. And if you're going to kind of go around... A model, you know, with almost um, 
you know, a pair of calipers and a micrometer and try and replicate those splodges and stains. It's very hard. Now you see what I did there? It pulled up. And what I did, I just used air. That is just press the trigger on your brush and that's just there. It just disperses it all into this nice little stain. Again, not accurate to the filming miniature because this isn't an accurate filming miniature. You know, this is just this is a Return of the Jedi Y-Wing that I just um, uh, cobbled together uh, into a gold too. I'll uh, I'll put a video up later of this one completed. I'm just you know just wrapping a few bits up on it. Um, but you know that that is one of the little silly techniques that people do ask about, and it's not perfect. You know, I'm not an amazing painter. I'm not John Simmons. John is phenomenal at what he does. He's such an amazing talent. But um, you know, it's uh, it's it's everybody's going to do it differently. Everybody's going to kind of do it their way. Showing just a few, um, a few just simple tips. You know, uh, it could go a long way, and I hope it helps somebody out there. Um, as I said, it is just it's a really simple method of doing it. I mean, you can pull back here some. I mean, it's not saying that this thin mix is now just for washing, because if I pull back, I can now apply a little bit of that paint just to blend it in a little bit more. Now I feel excuse. I mean, this is the first time doing this on it. On a camera, and you just end up toning out the part a little. I don't, I don't really know what kind of quality that's coming out at. Um, but as I said, yeah, the, you know, it's just one of the little simple things that we splodge all around our models. And have a lot of fun doing it, um, and it, it just gives that li just level of authenticity uh, to them, um, rather than looking like a, a scale model that you know has appeared in fine scale modeler, which you know I, I'm not bagging on that. I mean, you, you know, it's two totally different aspects of painting. Um, you know, painting in this fashion is. Um, yeah, everything's very topical. I mean, as you can see, these pipes here, uh, they're, they're actually not that saturated to the eye. This, uh, this camera really saturates everything crazy. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mist these out in a second. I'm just gonna mist some grime over them just to tone them down, because they do need toning down to the eye, but they do look a lot more uh, vivid on camera. But um, let me get that swapped out. Uh, in the brush and um, I'll just do some uh, gentle misting patterns over those because I mean when you mist a model you know you don't have to mist the entire model you haven't got to build it all finish it all and then start misting you can do a more localized misting uh, pattern you know it's, it's really easy to do um, and that's what I'll get to shortly so I'll finish these um, vein pieces up and then we'll get to some misting. Okay guys, um, apologies. I misted all the upper pipes <laughs> with grime and uh, hadn't hit record on the camera. I'm just all thumbs today. Um, but anyway, we've got a few pipes on the underside that we can just uh, mist over that I haven't done. <coughs> but as I was saying, I've got a very... Um, Fairly loose mix of uh, of archive X grime. You don't. It depends what kind of misting you're doing. Um, if you're really uh, misting an entire model, you know, if you're really going for it with a wider uh, nozzled gun or something, I'd recommend 
you know, probably a normal sort of viscosity uh, as you would be for painting. But remember, you're not painting the model. You know, you're using the, the airbrush at more of a distance in that um, <coughs> aspect. I mean, if I was going to just miss this entire thing now, I'd be using a... I'll be using my airbrush at around about maybe a 12 inch distance or something and kind of just spritzing it all over. Um, but for what I'm doing, I'm doing a more localized misting just to tone these out. Um, you know, some of you might like to actually complete a build and then mist. Um, I kind of go along the way tweaking various areas until I'm happy and then move along sometimes I get it wrong and I overdo it um, it happens less is always more with misting it really is less is more you're just laying a fine fine layer of almost aging to the model you're subduing any stark tones so you're getting um, you know to the naked eye it'll have a much more aged, vintage, attractive appearance. Um, it's achievable with, um, it's achievable with all paint really. You know, if you're gonna paint with Tamiya, if you're gonna paint with Vallejo, um, it's all doable. You haven't gotta be using Archive X. We use Archive X because we want the, um, we want the period tones. This is, you know, this is what we've wanted for so many years. And that's why we use Archive X here, you know, so I'll be using Archive X Light Grime here. And uh, all I'm going to do, I'm going to be using uh, the airbrush just to apply a mist tone to these pipes here. Uh, pressure, nothing crazy, around 15 or so. Um, again, yeah, using no nozzle because I want a more localised um, uh, application. But just but you can't really pick it up that well to the camera, especially over the. Uh, this is uh, Archive X Rust here, but to the eye. just subdues it down much better you know I mean you can even go as far as flecking on it um, which is yeah uh, I, you know just pull back the trigger for paint so you just get some paint in the chamber of the brush and then just press for air just try some speckling on it um, but that just about covers the pipes unfortunately because I've already done the upper ones um, but what I do need to do, I do need to mist uh, the rear little wings in, uh, which are always tricky because Y rings are so fragile. Uh, if I just rest her like so, I'll try and just get some misting passes over the uh, over these back rings. That's just passes. A thin dark light paint, you know, nothing elaborate, very, very simple. And what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to pull back a little bit and add the nozzle to the end of the brush. So I'm going to just nothing crazy, but it does tone it down to the eye you know it, it just gives um you know a much better uh appearance to the naked eye misting doesn't always become so uh apparent in uh, a lot of publications we see models in you know it's not always uh this um, immediately apparent uh, application, but I was lucky to see some of the models in um, 
in Paris, uh, especially Slave One, uh, which was an eye opener. Um, and you see the model in person, and as I said, it's um, it's very different uh, to how it appears in a lot of publications. You you, you see all those tones, so the greens and the greys and uh, the pinks, you know, the the reds. They're all. Um, it's almost like there's a fine layer of dust over everything and although they have aged <clears throat> over time yeah obviously they're very old <coughs> excuse me um that layer of dust is missing it's just you know just layers of paint so finely applied to just um desaturate everything and obviously that desaturation uh, it just gives a, a, a much finer um, impact on the eye. You, you know, I mean, uh, Red 3 is another one, the Hero Red 3 model, um, which I still believe was originally white. But when you see the model in person, it's grey. It's really, really grey. But even the tones that are laid upon it, uh, such as the greens, uh, the reds, uh, the earths, all of those tones they all look everything looks very gray it all looks very muted and uniform you, you know you, you get up close then and then you really appreciate what goes into painting um, these models for use as a filming tool as opposed to a scale modeler now I mean you know, you know and that's not a back on scale modelers it's just two completely different aspects of painting something like this you know like i said a lot of guys that go around applying these large washes and dabbing them all off with tissue and that kind of thing um yeah it's different aspects it's a different approach but there's no reason why you can't take this approach where which much of it's a very simplistic topical application and um you know move that into the bandai element i mean yeah it, it's doable it gets harder the smaller the model because a lot of the topical applications are hard to replicate at the um at the scales we're building in filming replicas i mean you know 124 scale and etc you know that that large size even then some of them are very hard to uh to replicate as John was saying the other day very rarely do we look to recreate every splodge and drip and blob exactly as it is on the miniature because it's nigh on impossible you know I mean when you're looking at latex work for sure you can do that you know that's achievable anything that's masked is achievable when you're just relying on the physics of you know air and paint flowing out your airbrush things it's a little bit different so don't be too harsh on yourself you know um do it try it try some techniques watch john's channel john will be the one to take this so much further he's so so much more an artist than me you know i get by with the paint um most of what I know, most of what I do, I've learned from Guy and John. Uh, they've been so helpful in um, improving what I do uh, in regards to painting. Um, you know, years ago I was an awful painter. I hated my paintwork. I used to dread painting. Now I still get a little trepidation when uh, it comes time to paint. Um, but I'm a lot more confident now than I used to be. And that's um, taking into account, you, you've got to just go at it and um, don't be too, don't be too pedantic when you're painting this kind of a, kind of a model. Uh, let the paint do what it wants to almost, you know, let physics take over almost. It, it sounds strange that way, but you know the, the paints are just a tool that they're just a tool in the box you know the user is what makes that paint um i mean they, these are guys words really you know we, we've spoke about this so many times but the paints are a tool it's the user that makes them shine um and so many of you 
you know, we all make them shine in different ways. Um, you know, um, as I said, it, it is very different. It's very different, but it's nice to pass on what I've learned uh, over the past few years and, and just pass that down the line. And although I'll never get to the point you know, of, of be, uh, you know, of being at the level where John is, that level of confidence where just everything he seems to do, it's just like, wow, you know, um, I'm not going to reach that level, but I, I'm at a level where I'm kind of happy with what I'm doing, you know, um, but doing it hands on, no procrastinating, which I do a lot, I will admit, but no, you know, don't procrastinate, just do it. You know, if uh, if you want to go and yeah, I know. For instance, I mean, uh, the cockpit on this bird. Now, there's quite a lot going on with it. I mean, you know, just these streaks here. They were really hard to do at this scale. That they they were quite tricky actually. Um, you know, there was a lot of a uh, lot of scope for getting them very wrong. They are a little bit starker than they should be. You know, a little bit more brunt but um i just did it and then I, I had some you know fun just taking it back just a little bit you know you've just got to try stuff um by all means grab some scraps of styrene even if you don't paint them in a base coat prime them prime them white whatever or base coat them take some scraps of styrene play around with your airbrush at various effects taking the nozzle off putting the nozzle on um, you know, try an inch away from the styrene, try it, you know, I mean, some of these, you know, in, in on the Y-wings, I've literally applied these kind of washes that I did on these T-rods at point-blank range. I'm literally, the, the, the airbrush and tip is, is resting on the model, and I just saturate it, and you can just watch it flow. And as it flows, you know, just use the air to blow it around as well. It always, it always kind of creates a... A desirable effect um, that's akin to many of the studio models um, and that's what it's all about really it's just having that free reign um, just you know, kind of if you're a scale modeler it's unlearning what you already know in a way it, you know I, I, I can I can imagine a lot of scale modelers, you know, real, you know, some amazing modelers, you know, painters looking at these things and going, yikes, you know, because the, it's a very different aspect of painting. Um, you know, I mean, John just the other day adding all the further aging to his red five. Now that's aging that isn't on the filming miniature, but that's aging that has since happened to the model in storage over the years and he's adding all that now that that's that's an awesome element you know that's an awesome thing to do and it's just adding another little technique to um to, to what you're already doing but um as i said guys i'm not going to go crazy on the paint uh videos that that that's that is john's yeah i'm really looking forward to more from john to be honest uh very much looking forward to it but it was just a, a, a just a little simple insight into um how i achieve it how i do it and how i paint these but what i'm going to do i'm going to uh wrap this up um it was just a little one on the paint and i'm going to get this transferred over to a base and actually do oh just going to do a little feature on this model um yeah yeah I'm going to wrap this up, <laughs> do a little feature on this model, and um, maybe look at doing some more uh, build work on the, on the channel now. I mean, I've got a little uh, Empire Strikes Back uh, background fleet, uh, you know, background ship model I'll be doing shortly. Um, maybe build that um, along uh, with you guys. Uh, maybe even paint it, you know, it might be fun just to do on the channel, just for a bit of fun. Not getting too anal about it and uh yeah just have a bit of a blast with that um so yeah maybe some build stuff coming up um yeah we'll just see how it uh, kind of pans out but at the moment it's just a case of just doing some videos and because there's no conventions or anything to display any of this at it's just um 
nice to bring the convention to you guys really but uh seriously thank you for all the likes and subscribes and you know really kind comments uh, uh, it's uh, um given given uh, my um it's given me a big boost and it's really nice to know there are supportive people out there um that enjoy this and you know by all means if i can help in any way if you've got any questions if you want to know anything by all means message me i mean reach out to me on on youtube go leave a comment reach out to me on facebook i'm always around you know give me a shout but uh seriously thank you for watching guys and i'll speak to you all soon